tutorial. Today we're going to be using Siemens TIA Portal version 14, Service Pack 1, and we are going to be using the high speed counter. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is create a project. We'll call this YouTube Tutorial 2. Go ahead and create that. Now we need to configure a device. We're going to add a device. I have an S7 1200 here. We're going to do it the quick way by using the detect. So we're going to throw in an unspecified CPU. We're going to go ahead and select detect. We're going to go ahead and start our search. Just shows that the, the connection that we're on and that's the correct one. You can select your list if you want. So here's our 1217C. We're going to go ahead and uh, detect that processor, which is going to go out and pull all the information from it and uh, load your device with everything in it in your project view here. So now that we're in our device view, first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go to the processor. We need to give it an uh, Ethernet address. Looks like we're going to go ahead and keep this one because we're on that network. It'll make it a lot easier for us. So we're going to go down to our high-speed counters. This card has uh, the option for high-speed counters, and we have an option of six. So we're just going to use the first one. We'll go ahead and uh, give, it a, give it focus, and then we're going to go ahead and come in here and go to general. And we're going to enable this high-speed counter. And we're going to select a function for it. Here, let's just give this whole window focus. So we'll drag that up here. So we're going to use the type of counting is we're going to use count. There are other options in here. And I know I have an AB counter. And I went in and I pulled up the information on this one. It is a Dynapar. It's an HA625 is the one that we have. The phase sense is a leads B for clockwise or counterclockwise shaft rotation as viewed from the shaft end. Uh, another thing to look at here is the square where uh, the square the blah excuse me the square wave will uh, with rise and fall times are less than one microsecond. I'm going to show you where this is going to play part. The frequency response is at uh, 100,000 kilohertz. So we're going to scroll down and the one that we have is the 625. It's got 1,000 counts, 3H shaft. Um, it's got the pin cable is a, is differential with index format A and table one. I'm going to show you below. The important thing for this one is we're going to use input 0, 1, and 2. So those require that it is 24 volt. This one, this processor also has differential, so you can use a uh, the 5 volt version. Um, so we're going to go ahead and scroll down the list here a little further to table 1. I highlighted all this already. So the only ones that we're going to use even though it has A0, B0, Z0 is we're going to use A, B, and Z. We're going to use the power source, the common, and the case. In the picture you can see here where I have wired everything up. scroll down the list a little bit further. Here's that format A I talked about where A leads B for counterclockwise rotation and the index at 180 with gate. So um, like I said we're not using B naught so we don't have to worry about that but this is the rotation that it's using. So we'll go ahead and minimize this and come back to our project view. So the initial counting direction is up. It doesn't matter which way you put this. It's still going to count in the direction that you wired it. So our initial values are zero. Here's your high limit and low limit. Sync input, we're not using. We're not going to use a capture, but we are going to use the gate. So we're going to go ahead and uh, look at the next compare output. We don't use event configuration. We're not using hardware inputs. This is where it's important. So we use an input uh, i.0, dot zero, i zero dot one, and i zero dot two we're going to change this to two 
Okay, hardware outputs we're not going to worry about. IO address, this is important, so when we go back to look for this count value, it's going to be an ID 1000. The hardware identifier is 259, and I'll show you where that plays a role here soon. Okay, now the next important thing that you're going to want to do when we went on to uh, the PDF here, we scroll back up the screen to our highlighted section at the top where it says the rise and fall times are less than one microsecond. We'll go back in here. We'll go ahead and collapse high-speed counters, but we do need to go to our digital inputs. We're going to come down to our inputs. We're going to go to our first input, or channel 0. We need to change that so that it's less than 1 microsecond. So it looks like this is the next. To be conservative, we'll use 0.4. The, the next input or channel will do the same thing and then we'll go to our third one that we're using and do the exact same thing okay all this stuff is set up now so everything looks good we'll go ahead and collapse this we'll go ahead and compile the processor and because we have a CP station we need to go and enable the functions on it so we can get rid of that warning. We'll go ahead and compile it again. Alright, now the only warning is the protection level and I'm not concerned with that at the moment. So we're going to go ahead now, we're going to go to our program blocks. We're going to go to the main organizational block over here in our devices tree underneath uh, the PLC, underneath the program blocks, and then to OB1. So now that we have our whole workspace, uh, our block interfer our interface open, we're going to want to go over to our uh, instructions palette here and we want to go to our technology objects, we want to go to counting, and we want to go to others and we're going to grab this high speed uh, or, or this control high speed counter and it's going to come up and it's going to want a data block for it. I'm going to just leave the default for this one and we're going to select OK. So right here it's going to want to know the identification number for your high speed counter. If you want some more information on this you just highlight the box, press F1 and what it's going to do it's going to bring up the information system or the help page files it so should pull up right to the counter you're on and if we go down here and look where it says HSC which is right here input this is the hardware address of the high-speed counter so where is that again we need to go back to the PLC we'll go ahead and lift the page back up here so we can see what we're doing we're going to select properties we're going to go back up to the high-speed counters expand it We'll expand high speed counter number one and hardware identifier it's right here so we want 259 so we'll go ahead and go back to our organizational block we'll go here and we'll just type in 259 and press enter so here changing the direction has never worked for me so we're just going to ignore it now the cv value this is where you're going to set your home position so we probably will want to use that so I can show you so we're going to do that we're just going to call this home ENC and right click we're going to define the tag and we use global memory that's fine but later I may want to use the other bits will change it to 10 and we'll go down here so this is our new CV value so we can change this at any time so we'll give it a We'll just do a new home. We'll right click on it. We'll define it. It's going to be a dent. We don't want to put it in zero. We're going to put this one in 20. And you can choose whatever numbers you want. This is just so I can use the clock and the clock. Uh, the clock and uh, have, here, I'll just go show you real quick. So we'll go back to the PLC. Go ahead and open up our uh, P 
view here for the properties and we'll go ahead and go down to system and clock memory bits we'll just go ahead and enable these so that we can't nah it won't try to put everything in its place so see this one uses memory uh, bit starting one and, or memory byte starting with one and memory byte zero so we got those enabled so we won't have that problem later we'll go back to our organizational block now and this whole thing is set up so you don't have to do anything else with it you can give yourself a status if you want to understand what it is again F1 you go through here we'll go to the bottom so your status status operation busy means it's processing <clears throat> your status um, I don't use any of those because I'm just uh, all I use is where my encoder is we're gonna go ahead and put one more item down here I'm gonna just do a drop down I'm going to put in a move instruction so go to basic instructions move operations I'm just gonna put in a move we're gonna use the ID 1000 just uh, we'll go back here and I'll show you what that was and that is the address of your high-speed counter so open that up IO address it's 1000 go back to our organizational block now and we're gonna put here um, we'll just put ENC result right click to find the tag to work and that's all we got so we're gonna go ahead and go online and download this after we compile the block make sure we have no errors everything looks good except for our protection level warning which I'm not concerned about so let's go ahead and download it to our processor We're going to go ahead and do it without synchronization. I had something else in here before. Stop all. Let's go ahead and load it. And we'll select finish and it'll start up the processor and put it in run mode. Let's go ahead and go online with our processor. Let's go ahead and drag this page down just a little bit. Go ahead and We'll just go ahead and put it at the bottom. We're going to go ahead and hit play. So, right now here at the bottom shows all this in this format. We want to look at it in decimal. Okay. So, right now, our control high speed counter block is running. We are. We have a zero for our home position if we would set it. So if I'm going to reach over here and I'm going to go ahead and rotate the encoder and we should start seeing it count up. So I'll go do one rev, uh, one revolution. It's at 1000. Go ahead and do another one. 2000 and so on. You get the picture with that. So if, let's say that uh, we moved to position. We want it to be home now. So we activate our home bit and it puts it at zero so if you want to have a different one like a two inch offset or whatever uh, you end up with for your offset you can put your offset in right here so we'll do 250 uh, count offset and now when it when it homes as you see the counter is at 250 so I hope this helps explain the encoder function with in TIA portal version 14 SP1. Uh, I've got some other tutorials coming out. We're going to do some address slicing. We're going to work with some timers and up down counters, not high speed counters. And then we'll get into some more of our HMI uh, fun and we'll move on from there. Thanks for watching.